Welcome back you guys. My name is Legit Lee and today I just wanted to show you that I'm going to be doing tutoring for people that want to learn how to use Blender to design things to 3D print. So if you're trying to be somebody that uses Blender and learns it, I mean I'm not an expert but I do know a good little amount of it for at least designing 3D for STL files so that way I can 3D print stuff like this. This right here is called a calibration cube. So I didn't design this but I found it on Thingiverse and um, I printed this out on my Ender 3 3D printer, the Creality Ender 3. So um, if you have a 3D printer I will be able to assist you with designing your own things to actually design to make things in real life from Blender. That was one of the reasons why I had started the Facebook group called Blender and IRL for in real life. And um, so right now I'm going to be doing tutorials for people that would like to learn how to design things in real life. And it would be where you can design in Blender and then export the D the STL file and put it onto a slicer program. I have Cura, Ultimaker Cura, Cura. So um, that's what I like to use for my 3D printers, and I use a Ender 3 and sometimes a CR10. I n I just need to fix that, but. Um, I did fix my Ender 3, which I mentioned in previous videos. So let me know in the comments down below if you want to learn how to design stuff in Blender to 3D print them out in real life from the designs that you make. So that's what this going to be my new, I guess, series. Or oh, really, I'm going to probably start me a Fiverr account or a Udemy account to help out people because I would like to teach people and obviously get paid for the work that I'm showing but I'm gonna be using my webcam like I'm using right now to be able to talk to you guys you guys will be able to see my face and then I could tell you and guide you step by step process so first thing you're gonna have to do is get blender I got blender 3.0 right now on my desktop but you're gonna probably want to get the newest version of Blender, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So over here, Blender, download Blender 3.5. That's the latest version of Blender. So I'm gonna open, I'm gonna click on this, and then we're gonna go, oh, you see it's um, downloading right now, 3.5. It's an MSI um, file. And it's not going to take too long. It just takes a few minutes for it to fully download. My internet speed isn't the fastest in the world, but it will definitely help out. So, as you can see, uh, Blender should have already downloaded the, the new version, 3.5. So, if I go to my downloads over here and I open up the file, it's in downloads. So all I gotta do is just double click on it with my left click button. And there we go. Hit next. I accept. Hit next, next, install. So that's on blender.org, I believe. So if you go to your web browser and you put um, blend, um, and if you go to Google on your web web browser, then you can uh, see I got a new one, so I'm gonna hit yes. So it's installing the new version of Blender right now. Anyway, um, so if you have a web, whatever your web browser is, whether you use Chrome or the um Windows um the Windows browser I don't really know what it's called anymore it used to be um, e for like it's like uh, internet I guess so like explore I think that's what it was called back in the day but 
Um, I use um, Mozilla Firefox for whenever I'm using my web browser for the internet. So you can see right now that it's copying the fi new files. It's going to just take a few seconds and then it'll be done here in a minute. Uh, move that out of the way. That's the download stuff. And we're almost done, so we just have to be a little patient here. I'm not going to try to make this video out to be too long, but I will show you how to design a 20 millimeter cube, the calibration cube, if you want to actually start learning how to 3D design things so you can print them out on your printers. Okay, so that finished. So I'm going to hit next. Oh, finish. Okay, now we can close down my web browser. And now we have Blender. I have Blender 2.8, Blender 3.0, and the new version of Blender should have just already up. Oh, um, there it is. It's right here, I believe. No, that's not it. Uh, it's another um, blender thing, but um, I don't see. Oh, there it goes. It's right over here in the corner. Okay, double click on that. And when you if you already have Blender, it's gonna ask you here in a second. It's gonna ask me if I want to import from the original Blender. Usually, is what it will ask you. Um, low setting. Oh, save new current. Uh, save new settings or load 3.1 settings. So I'll do that because I already have Blender and I just want to make sure that it saves all the information. So the first thing you're going to be prompted with is this 20, this 2 millimeter is 2 millimeter. It's a 2 millimeter cube. So I'm gonna move this over so you guys can see my face here. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna scale this up I'm down a little bit so you can see me a little better. All right, about there should good be good. I'll um, move it over a little more. Uh, scale it down a little bit more. I'm sorry if this video is taking forever, guys. It's one of those me teaching you. Um, this is a basically gonna be a start for a new series, or a new um, tut a tutoring um, channel that you can actually get. And I'm going to be... You guys comment down below if you want me to make a Udemy account or a Fiverr account. Whatever one will work for me, I'm going to just let me know so I can set it up. And then um, I'll be able to talk to you guys basically face-to-face -face if you have a web browser, I um, mean yeah, a webcam, or... Um, we can just do where you we do like live chat or like messaging or something. But all I know is that you'll be able to see my face with my webcam, and I can even show you using my webcam and like highlight over my keyboard so that we can see what keys I'm pressing, like the the hot keys basically. But uh, now that we have this open up, I'm going to show you how I actually start designing in Blender. First thing you're going to want to do is go to File and then you're going to go to oh wait, no not File, Edit Preferences here. So in Preferences you'll be able to go to Add-ons I believe is what it's called. Let me just double check here. Interface here you go, Add-ons. So right here I already have it set up because it imported from the first blender that I was using a second ago. But um, you're going to want to search and type in measure it. That's going to be the best way for you to design stuff in real life. So you use measure it. It says 3D view measure it. So as soon as you click, it's already check marked, but you're going to have to hit the check box. And once you do that, then you're done. Then you just uh, install or like you um, just click on it and then hit refresh or install or whatever the case may be. I don't know. I don't need to do it at the very second. But once you do that, 
Then all you have to do is go on your keyboard and hit, uh, you're going to have to hit N. And you'll see this left, uh, right side is going to pop up. You're going to go to view. And then you see down here at the bottom on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see measure it tool. So you're going to click on that. And then you'll go down a little bit, scroll down with your mouse wheel. And then now that we're already still inside of, we're in object mode right now. And if you hit tab on your keyboard, that will get you into edit mode now. So I'm going to hit A twice to deselect all these vertices. These are individual dots. They're called vertices. So I'm going to hit A twice, one, two, and that will deselect everything. <clears throat> and... If you just go to one vertice, or I hit one on my numpad, the keyboard numpad has the number one on it. If I do that, that will be front view. And if I hit shift, if I hold down the shift button and click on the first vertice right there, and then keep on holding down shift, and you click on the other vertice on the right. Now you selected both vertices, and if you hit show, on the measure it tool toolbar uh, you're gonna go and hit show and then you're gonna hit segment and that will show us the two millimeters it's gonna say 2m instead of millimeters um, because it's showing metric it's gonna show meters instead of millimeters but I work best in meters for this so I'm gonna leave it like that so I'll have to show you guys so down here, you can see when you hit segment, it came up with this little, um, this little add-on attachment underneath the measure it information all the way at the bottom. So if you click on, it's going to show, always going to show blue first. So I'm going to change that to red. So if you click on the blue box and you go down to the bottom here, you'll be able to see that it turned red now. And now I'm going to change the font size. So instead of being, I believe it's 14. So we're going to change that by hitting this gear. And you can see it says 14 right here. If you just click and scroll over to the right, it'll actually bring up the font size so you can see it better. So right here, you can see that it's going to show 2M or 2.00M. That's going to be millimeters basically. So now that we have the information, we're going to go over to this top um, left box. That's actually face. So that means instead of doing individual dots like this that we just did to show the measure it information for the millimeters. So if you click on this box right here. Now we're going to be on face select mode. So if you just go over to the side, I'm just using my middle mouse button to pan over to the edge here from front view. We can do front view again. And then I can do the pan in information with my middle mouse button again. And then if we, if, <coughs> I'm sorry. All right, so if we just click on this side of the face, you can see it's highlighted. It looks a little like orange or like a yellowish orange, I guess. And now that we have it selected, all we got to do is go over to this on these four arrows going left, right, up, and down. If you just click that, that's called move, and that'll give us these um, arrows that will show you in what direction to go. So if we go back to front view by clicking one on a numpad, you'll be in front view. So this will be like you looking at me right now in the video. So if we go, if we click on the red arrow and move it over on the right, it'll bring up the actual amount of space that you're extending. So instead of 2, let's just go to 10. 
So if you just keep on holding it and moving it over to the right on your mouse, there you go, 10. I'm going to zoom out a little bit a little bit by scrolling back on my mouse wheel. So now you can see it says 10.00m, which is 10 millimeters. So I want to change that to be in a 20 millimeter cube, so we're going to move it over some more. I'll use this to move to pan over to the right. Okay, so now I'm going to move it over some more. We're going to bring it up to 20 because that's what um, what we use for uh, whenever you're using Thingiverse for the calibration cube is a 20 millimeter cube. Okay, I'm going to bring it down. There we go, 20. So now that we have that done, we're going to go to edge. This is edge select basically in the center between that dot and the fate on the um, box. So if we hit A twice on our keyboard, that'll deselect everything. And if we hit right here, that'll show that's basically me touching the top and bottom of that vertice. Of the vertices like if we were using the vertice select mode so now that we have both of those selected basically we'll hit segment one more time and now it's going to show still it's going to be whenever you start blender it's going to be a two millimeter cube instead of a 20. so right there it shows 2m or 2.00m so if we go scroll down with your mouse wheel then you can get to that um, blue. Remember, I told you it's always going to be blue. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change it to green. Okay, and then we're going to go to that gear. And then we'll go down a little bit. You can see it shows 14 for the font size. We're going to bring it up again. And the reason why you want to do this is so that we can actually see everything that you're trying to do. You want to be able to see the numbers so that way you can actually make sure it's accurate. So now we're going to go back over here to the, the box. So then we're going to press A twice, one, two. And then we're going to, I'm going to click my middle mouse button and then pull down a little bit so I can look up. And then I'm going to click on this top um, box. So that's going to be all the faces and the vertices at the same time. So now we're going to go into a front view and we're still on um, move. So we're going to leave that like it is and then we're going to go up. So we already have a 20 millimeter um, box on left and right. So now we're going to do the X which is up and down. So X is going to be this blue um this blue arrow so we gotta just go upward and you can see me going up it's already changing the vertices or the size on that green that i was just making so if i just go all the way up here eight nine ten eleven twelve let me zoom out a little bit so I can see. I'm going to move up. Okay. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Well, it says 21. Now, if you want to make sure you're really accurate, all you got to do is just zoom in a little bit by going up on your mouse pad. And then you can go down a little bit here. Alright, it can be a little tricky, but zooming in a lot would help to make it more accurate. Alright, uh, well 20.101, 20 
I mean, that's not too bad, but I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Oh, yeah, before I forget to tell you, uh, on the measure of information underneath that red, that um, green that I made, if you go over here, you can actually move where you place your numbers. So if I go over to the left on the x-axis, it'll move it over to the left. So now if I zoom in a little bit and go down just a tad. Now all I got to do is just go down a little bit more. I'm sorry if you can hear all that noise. It's my niece. She's being ridiculous right now. So, all right. Now it is 0 0.0, uh, 20.01. And that would actually be okay. It doesn't have to be super accurate, but I'm just trying to see if I can get it anywhere closer to 20 exact like this one is. <laughs> yeah, it's not really doing it. But um, that should be fine for now. This is all just a test. I just want to show you guys that I know what I'm doing here. Anyway... So now that we have the left and right set for, uh, sorry, I'm a little tired, but um, the x, the left and the right, or the x-axis is set for 20 millimeters, and the top and bottom is set for 20 millimeters, or 20.01. Now I'm going to click on the middle mouse button and then scroll to the back here. Move over, okay, right about here. And now I'm going to go back to the individual edges. This is the center. And I'm going to double click my A button. One, two. One, two. There we go. And then I'm going to click on this one right here on the edge. And I'm going to go back to segment. And then I'm going to go back down because it's going to show blue, which is fine. But I need to bring the font size up so I'm gonna do that now so you see it's gonna always show two millimeters so now we're going to deselect everything by pressing A twice one two and then I'm going to grab this back side on uh, back of the face and then we're going to go back to um, our side view which is gonna be three on our numpad so that'll get us over to our right set side view. So now that we have the side view, we're going to move this over to the back here. And you can see we're still at two millimeters because we haven't changed anything yet. But I'm gonna hide the red 20. So if we just click on this eye here, it'll hide it. And if you want to do that for your green one, you can always do that too if you want. But I don't need to really because we're, we're trying to use it. First, we're going to have to move it over on the Y so we can see. And then I'm going to move it over on the X. Y and then X should be right here I believe it's hard because I don't see it but oh, let me see oh there it goes it's in the center all right so now we're going to move back and you can see that was for the green we don't really need the green right now but the blue let me go down to the blue and then we can move this on the X too Okay, and I'm just grabbing this green arrow and pulling it. Now it's going backwards on the y-axis, so front and back. So now that we got that moving, it's going to go up to 20 millimeters. It's a little more than 20. But if I try to zoom in here by using my scroll wheel to go up on my scroll, scroll wheel on the mouse, You'll be able to see it says 20.16. So if I go back a little bit, 20.1. Just like how it said for 
the other um, for the top view I believe the z-axis up and down but now on the y-axis we have 20.01 which is good so both the X and the Y and the Z or the X Y and Z are both all 20 millimeters so now that we have that done we don't need these right now because we already have it set up so now you have a complete box I'm just showing you what it looks like and if you want it to you can always ch change the color of the box of the cube so if you go to this middle button right here it's at the left on the right center little box here we click on that and we go down to this little it looks like the world material properties is what it's called so i'm gonna click on that and then if we go over here you can see it looks white which is the color of the box right now so i'm gonna click on that and we'll change it to yellow like how the one i 3d printed already looks yellow like this right here so i'll change it to yellow right about here that looks pretty good okay now that we have basically the same type of cube the only difference is on the calibration cube you have letters so you have X Y and Z as you can see here that's Y and then X is the front and then Z is the top so if you wanted to input lettering into your um, object or your cube you can always do that we're still in edit mode so we're gonna have to get out of that by clicking tab on the on the keyboard now we're back in object mode so if you hit shift a that'll get bring up this bar and it's gonna say mesh at the top and you're gonna go over and then you're gonna go down oh no wait not that you're gonna go once it opens up go down to text you click on that and text is gonna be down there right in the dead center of blender so now we're going to right now I'm going to hide my cube by clicking this eye drop this eye here for a cube so now it's invisible for a second and now I'm gonna zoom in you can see it that says text right there so if we click on that here, you can select it or you can just click over here well, like how I did for the cube. So now you have the text selected, but it's going to say text. So in order to change that, you're going to have to go back into edit mode while you have it selected. So if you go tab on your keyboard, now you're back in edit mode. As you can see right here, it says edit mode. So now we're going to hit backspace on the keyboard and that's going to take away the text information. So if we're going to copy the calibration cube, we'll do the X first since it's the front. So that X right there, we're going to do X here. So I'm going to hit shift X on it after I had took out the text by backspacing. So now we have it set for X now. And also, if you want to, you can change the size of your X here. If you go over here to this A, that's the properties. And you can change the font um, size. So if I go down here, uh, it's been a little while since I've done this. Um, font, here it goes. So you click font. And it brings down another um, a little bit of information so we're gonna do size you see it says one here so I'm gonna go up going over on my on the right and the size information is bringing the X up now I'm gonna go probably up to like four
There you go, four. So that looks okay. So that is pretty much how you would do the text information. So how you gonna how we're gonna do the X like on this calibration cube right here. Um, we're going to do we're gonna have to get out of edit mode now because we already edited the text information. So we're gonna do tab on the keyboard. Now we're back in object mode as you can see here. Now we're going to right click and then we're going to set origin to center or mass volume. So now we're going to be, that's going to be the center of what we move our information at. So if I go back to move, you can see right there, it's move, we can move, it has the arrows for us to move it on the X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to move it over to right about here. We're going to go back to top view. So we're going to click on this Z, this little circle. Now we're in top view. And I'm going to move down and then we're going to bring this um, red arrow down to this red line by using the actual um, red arrow key here. We're going to bring it down to the center of the pointing, the pointing arrow, the red pointing arrow. So I'm zooming in a little bit so I can see really good and move it up. Okay. So we're going to move this to right here. That looks good. And we're going to want to make sure that we're at the green line is going to be on the green arrow. So I'm going to move over with the red arrow a little bit here just to show. There we go. Right in the center. So now that we're done with this, all we got to do is hit one on a numpad to go to front view. So now that we're in the front view, we're going to have to go to our side view again because I need to show you how to do this. So we're going to hit 3 on a numpad. That's the right side view. Like how I'm looking at you guys right now basically or at the camera. But um, now that we have that, we're going to hit R, the, num the, the letter R on your keyboard. And then we're going to type in, after you hit R, you're going to type in 90 on your keyboard, 90 for 90 degree, uh, 90, uh, 90 degrees angle, or that's, R is for rotate, so we rotated 90 degrees. And now we hit enter, and then that will be set for 90 degrees. And you can see that our arrow is on the line, which is good. The arrow is on the line, so all the arrows in the right spot. Now... I need to make sure that you guys are doing all this right. So I'm going to do one on my numpad to do the front view. One. So now you can see the X looks pretty big, which is good. And it's right in the center of everything. So now we're going to right click on the X. And then we're going to convert to. And we're going to go over to mesh. So now it's an object instead of just a text. So now that it's an object, we're going to go three on a numpad to get back to the right side view. There we go. And now we're going to do edit mode again. So we're going to go tab on a keyboard. Now we're back in edit mode. And what we're going to do for this mesh information, um, uh, Matter of fact, I can show you. Let's go one on a numpad. So now we have one on a numpad. You can see all these um, edges or these lines. So what you can do is just click on the dot all the way on your left hand side. And you can see all these little dots are showing up because we converted the text to a mesh, which is an object. So. Now what you're going to want to do is go over to this world looking all the way on your left hand side. It's basically a viewport shading information, but um, that's x-ray view. So if we click on that, now you can see 
the faces is gone. All we can see is the individual vertices. So if we hit B on our keyboard, that will show us box select mode. And you can see all these little dots came up. So if we right uh, left click on our mouse, we can drag out this box. And now we just selected all these edges over here, which is basically a whole face. So now we're gonna hit. <clears throat> we're going to hit three on our numpad, and now you can see we're in the right side view. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to make all these vertices extend out a little bit. So what we're gonna do is hit E to extrude. E, and then we're going to put Y for the where it's going to be extruding at. So Y is going to be front and back. So Y, you can see the line showed up. So we're going to go forward. And I'll do right about there at that um, box line right here. You see right here. So that's pretty good. And now what we're going to do is go back to showing all the information. So I'm going to do this original solid uh, white circle. And now you can see that the faces are, are more pronounced. So we're gonna click on this edge here, the edge select mode, the center right next to that um, dot for the vertices. So we're gonna wanna click on that. We're gonna hit A twice on the keyboard one more time. One, two, one, two, okay. And now we're going to click right here at the top edge. And then we're going to hit segment again. And it's still showing it. Because every time you hit segment, it's going to come up blue. And it's going to show how many millimeters you're set for. So I'm going to change that from blue to, let's do a yellow. Uh, no, green. Or do green. And then we're gonna change the font size from 14. It's always gonna be 14 at first. So now we're at 0 0.99, so it's almost one millimeter. So we're going to adjust that by clicking on the individual dots, like I was mentioning, the individual vertices. Hit A twice on our keyboard, one, two. And then we're gonna go back into X-ray view with this uh, all the way on the right hand side right next to that solid white circle so now we're gonna hit B again and then it's gonna give us box select so we're gonna drag over these front vertices here and then we're gonna pull it out some more I'm gonna get up to five so that's bringing it up to five millimeters here three four and five all right so I'm gonna go back a little bit here, uh, up a little bit more. Five, two, five, there we go. Okay, so now that is five millimeters in length from the front and back, so on the Y axis. So now that we have that, we don't need to see the five anymore because we already know it's set for five millimeters. Anyway, so now that we have all that done, we're going to go back to that center on that solid white circle. And now if I just click on my middle mouse button and move it over, you can see that it looks a lot bigger or longer. So we're going to hit one on an unpad so you can see it in the front view. So now we have all that set up. We're going to hit tab on our keyboard to get back into object mode. So now we're back in object mode and we're going to bring back our yellow cube. But it's not going to look yellow because we just selected the white center. So we're going to have to go over to the one that's next to it over on your left, your right hand side. Now it's still going to show yellow because that's what we made it for. So now we're going to... Um, bring the X up so right about here that's pretty good now remember we only made it four 
for the font size so it's going to look a little smaller than the original calibration cube that I have right here uh, right here the X so now we have that um, set up we can make it bigger by just hitting S to scale we're gonna be we can scale it out to be bigger so if I hit S on my keyboard that'll bring it up to actually a bigger font size and remember it was gonna still be uh, five millimeters I believe um, long but it may change now that we're scaling it out but that's fine because it's not that necessary to adjust that but uh, we're gonna double check so right now I'm going to bring back that green so now it's 30 for the length of the at the X here so I'm gonna go over I'm in three on my keyboard to get to the right side view so over here on the X that we made it's actually 30 millimeters basically long so if we just click since we're on move still if we go click on the the green arrow and pull it back that will be going into the cube that we have here and let's just double check we're gonna make sure that the cube is set let me just do center right click and we're gonna go to origin center of mass surface volume so now we have that set and then we're gonna move this up I wanna make sure that the white line here or the yellow the orange line now is gonna be matched up with that green line so I'm gonna go up a little bit more here that looks pretty good so now I'm gonna go um, back up here so we can get the let me just hide that um, that green Oh wait, I gotta select that one to hide it there. So now that we have that, we're going to move it forward a little bit here. And zoom in a little bit so you can see it pretty good. And move it over right about here. So now that orange line that's hot, the highlighted um, cube. So we have that set for the blue line and the green line over here in the back so that should be dead center so now we have that um, fixed we're going to click on the X and then make sure that we're let me go to front view so I can see here so one on numpad and now we're gonna just make sure that the X is in the center basically of the cube so that's the top all the way so we don't need it that high up so I'm gonna go down to right about here that looks okay so now we're gonna hit three on numpad again and then we're going to go since it's 30 millimeters now we're going to go about right I want to say here would be pretty good oh no no right about here okay so now we got our X I'm just clicking my middle mouse button so I like can pan around so I can see it so now we have the X inside the cube we're gonna click on the cube now and now this is gonna be the fun part this is how we're gonna make the X on our calibration cube here so how we're gonna actually cut the X into the cube is gonna be a modifier so over here you got these this little wrench so if you click on it it'll add modifier all you gotta do is click add modifier and you go down to boolean over here on your left hand side and then you're gonna click on this eyedropper tool here and we're gonna go over to the text you see it says object text so we're gonna click on that and it's already gonna be set for difference which we want because we're gonna be cutting so we're gonna cut into the cube. So now all we gotta do is go to this drop down um, arrow and then we're gonna go down to apply. 
So you click on apply and now that should be applied. So we're going to click on the X now and then we're going to click. You see it's highlighted as text. So if we click on this I here, it's going to hide it. So now it's gone. So now if we zoom out here, uh, let me just double check here because I'm not sure. I'm not seeing it yet, but oh, there it goes. Okay. So if I click x ray, you can actually see the x is actually still there, and it's it should be inside of the cube, so that's what I'm trying to find out right now. But I don't actually see it, so that's a little strange. So let's bring that back. Um, wrong cube. Let's just double check. I'm going to do bowling again. Difference. We're going to click on this. Let's just hold on before I do this. Um, I'm going to deselect by hitting the right. No, um, key right on my um, mouse right click um, anyway I need to probably move this in a little more so I'm gonna do three on my numpad uh, right about here looks pretty good uh, maybe a little more right there looks okay all right now we're going to do, um, we're going to right, we're going to metal click on our mouse to move it around. And now we're going to click on the cube again. And this time we can do the difference again. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool, click on the object text. And you see it's selected object text or text. And then we're going to go down and hit apply. And now I'm going to click on the text. Now you see it's highlighted, so I'm going to close it out. And you still don't see it for some reason. I don't see why it's not showing it. But if I do the x-ray view, it'll probably show it. See, the x-ray view is actually showing the information a little bit. But um, what we'll do, we'll get out of... Let me go back to seeing my color. I'll click on the on the cube itself and let's go to edit mode. So I'm going to click tab. Okay, so now you can see the dots, the um, vertices on it. So what you can do if you're having this sort of issue, x-ray, um, I'll go back to looking at the color anyway so now that we have the X we're going to just hit B on our keyboard so we can box select all these vertices on the X and we're gonna hit 3 on our numpad and then I'm gonna hit E to extrude on my keyboard to go backwards E and then we're gonna hit Y E Y so we can move it back back and forward but I'm gonna just click control Z to undo because I think I selected all the ver yeah these vertices too so let's hit a twice one two to deselect everything one on a numpad again to sew the front view and then I hit B again to box select we're gonna grab these vertices one more time Okay, so we got all the vertices selected. Now three on the numpad again. Hit E to extrude, and then we're gonna do Y again, and that's gonna bring it back. We can't really see it. Let's do X-ray view. Okay. So you kinda can see it now a little bit, but it's not looking all that great for some reason. So I'm going to undo this, control Z. Now I'm going to hit E, Y, go back. 
All right there. Oh, you know what? Let me undo this and we'll just select the face. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to this yellow. Hit A twice or three times. Okay, select this one. Three. E on the Y, and that's gonna bring it back. Now let's look at our x-ray view, and that one actually looks accurate now. So that actually brought the X in. So we finally got it. I'm sorry it was taking so long, you guys. So now if we just go back to showing the color, you can see the color, and it's actually indented in now. So we're going to hit 3, and then we'll go back to x-ray view so that way we can actually see because we don't want it to go too far deep. Just want it a little bit. So I'm going to go right about here. Uh, no, next line right here. Okay. So now we have that in. And you can always double check to see because I believe this is probably one millimeter on the calibration cube. It looks not too deep. So if you want to make sure that you're as accurate as you could possibly be, um, I'm going to press A twice, one, two, to deselect everything. And I'm going to go into the center to select the face. We're going to click on that face right here. And then we'll hit segment again. And now it's showing 9 or 2.9, I believe. Let me just see. 2.89. So I'm going to go down, I'm scrolling down to get to this area. We're going to change it to red. And then we're going to change the font size to be bigger. So you can see now it shows 2.89. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select the face again. We're going to hit A twice, one, two, three, oh, one, two, three. There we go, three times to get rid of that. Anyway, now I'm going to select this face in the front if I can. Hold on, let me just see. There we go. So now we have the X face selected. We're going to go back to 3 on our keyboard. And then we're going to go back into X-ray view. And then we're going to go up or forward on the Y. We want one millimeter, basically is what I'm going to try to put it for. Uh, just a little bit, almost. One ten, one, one oh, oh wait, dang. One on one. Okay. So now we have that. We're going to go back to looking at the actual color. So now if we look over here, now we're basically one millimeter in for the X for the front view. And now that we have that completed, we're going to get out of edit mode. We can just click up here and go down to object mode. Instead of hitting the, nut, the tab key on your keyboard. So now we have the X inside of there. So now you don't need the X text that we hidden. So I'm going to bring that back out. And we're going to go ahead and delete it. So I'm going to hit click on it. And then I'm going to hit D, delete on my, num, on my keyboard to get rid of it. Now we got the X on the... 20 millimeter calibration cube that we're making and if you want to you can just we're still in object mode so if we hit shift a again shift a and now we go back to text and we're gonna move the text up because it's a little low okay now we're we got the text out because now we're going to work on the Z. 
I know we just did the X, we should probably do Y first so that we can kind of go with the alphabet. But um, I'm going to hit Tab. Now we have the text selected. You can see it's highlighted over here. So if you hit Tab, that will get you back into edit mode, which again, like I mentioned on the one that we did for the X, since it says text, we're going to zoom in. Then I'm going to hit the backspace key on my, on my keyboard. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to do Y. So shift Y on the keyboard. And now you can see it's in here. But remember, like I was telling you before, it's going to show bigger than what, uh, smaller than what it needs to be. So we're going to go down to the A on your right hand side in the corner. And then we're going to do font again. Click on that tab. Now we're going to go down to the size, I believe is what it was at. Font. Here we go, size. So we're going to bring it up again, just like how we did on the y, on the X, which I believe we brought up to 4. But I know we had to scale it out to make it bigger, which it turned out to be like 30. So it may happen again, but it's fine. So 4 again. So now we're done with this. Now we're going to hit tab again to get back into object mode. So now we're back in ob uh, object mode. Now we're going to right click on the Y. And then remember we're going to convert it to a, to a mesh. So if we go right click on it. Convert to mesh. So now it's an object. Again, just like how the X was. Anyway, um, now that we have that converted to a mesh, we're going to go to our right hand view by hitting three on the numpad. And then we're gonna go up a little bit here. And now that it is a mesh, I need to change it. So we're gonna do R to rotate, and then we're gonna do 90 again to make it a 90 degrees angle rotation and I'm hit enter on my keyboard to make sure it's set for that and then we're going to right click on the Y let me just make sure that we can see it okay right click and then we're going to set origin to center of mass volume again and then we're going to hit 3 on the keyboard and then we're going to bring this back here and then I'm moving over on the y on the y axis to go backwards to so move this backwards and then I'm gonna hit click on the blue arrow to go down and then we're going to select oh let me just hit one again that's the front view on my keyboard on my numpad and then we're going to zoom out a little bit so it can bring this down so we can see you can't see it all that well because the X is kind of in the way so we're gonna hit shift one on a numpad and that will get us to the backside view so with our backside view uh, oh. All we got to do is move it over here. That is still selecting the text for the Y. And I'm going to hit my middle mouse button. And then we're going to move it over so we can see a little better. So the Y is right there. And remember, we need to probably, well, let's move it over to the front. So I'm going to hit 7 to go to the top view on the, the Z-axis. And we're going to move it forward to the front. The reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to have to scale this out again. So I want to make sure it's kind of the same size as the X that we made. So uh, now I'm going to do one on numpad. You can't really see the text yet for the Y, I mean the X, but... um. If I go to, oh sorry, if I go to my X-ray view, you can see it now. So now we're going to go down with the hand to 
because that is the hand is actually our, our uh, rotation uh, well not rotation but our um, viewport um, movement basically anyway so I'll move this over and I'll move it down I'm trying to get to the center of the X here a little bit it's right about here looks good so now that we have it we're gonna hit tab on our note on our keyboard so we're going back into object mode or edit mode now we're gonna hit B to select all these vertices over here all these faces because we're still on the face select so now we have that selected we're going to do three on a numpad and then we're going to hit E to extrude and hit Y on the Y axis so we're moving it and we're are out backwards so that looks pretty good so all that is set up so now we're going to hit tab again to get out of edit mode and now if we hit the inform the colors now you can kind of see the Y is a little pronounced you can see it a little bit better because it's going to show white because we didn't change the color of it yet but um let me do one on my numpad here and now we're going to hit the um x-ray view so you can see it now we're going to hit s to scale it out to make it bigger so s on the keyboard now we're going to make it a lot bigger so we can kind of match up the x size so we're going to go down a little bit here I move it over. I'm trying to line up both of the lines. I'm gonna hit S to scale again a little more, just to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, right about there. Bring this down so it can line up both the the um, highlighted line for the Y and the black line for the X. And we're gonna have to hit S again to bring it back down a little bit. So S, and then I'm gonna bring it up, go up a little so that way it can go down. Right about there looks good. So I move there and go up a little bit here. Okay, move over. And that looks pretty good. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but it looks okay. So now that we have the Y kind of the same size as the X, all we need to do is, uh, first things first, we're going to probably have to 7 to do the top view. So now you can see that it is really pronounced in here. But if we look at it with the colors you can see the Y is actually looking upside down so shift one to get the back side view shift one or one and shift one or a matter of fact we could just click this one okay or let me click the other Y. There we go. So now this Y is looking upside down. So we're going to have to rotate this again. Hit R to rotate. We're going to type in 90 again. R one more time. Hit 90 again. Hit enter. Now we're going to bring it up. And I want to put it right about here. Looks pretty good. And then I'm going to hit 3 on the numpad so we can see how far deep we are. So I'm going to do x-ray view. And we're in object mode still, so we're going to have to go into edit mode. So I just clicked on that edit mode. And then we're going to grab the edges. So I'm going to hit H twice to deselect. 1, 2. 
And then I'm going to click on this top edge up here. And then we're going to segment this one. Now it's segmented, but you can't see it all that well. So let me just change it to, let's do yellow. And I'm gonna change the font size again. So it's at 26 millimeters or a little more than 26. So now what we're gonna do is hit A twice, one, two, and then we're gonna go over to our face select mode and then we're gonna scroll over so we can see it. Uh, let me go back over here to the front view. Oh, uh, this front, the back view, I mean. Uh, let's go to where we can see. So I'm gonna click on that. It's a color. And then we'll, we're already um, face selected. So if we hit B on our keyboard, we can get the box select mode and then drag over the Y for all the front faces. So now we have that selected, we're gonna hit three on a numpad. And then we're gonna hit the X-ray view. And then I'm gonna bring this down or bring it, Um, hold on. That will probably be backwards. So I'm gonna go back. So we're making it smaller, which is a good thing. And remember we did about five, I believe the last, huh? oh no, one. Let's do one. Three, two, and 187 now. Almost there. One, three. Uh, that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to make sure that the dent, the dent is going to happen. Okay. So now that we have our Y set up for the most part, let me just click on this so we can see it. So that is our Y. So now what we're going to have to do is <clears throat> go back into object mode. So hit tab. Now we're back in object mode. Now click on that I'm gonna right click set origin to mat center of mass surface volume again so now I'm gonna move it over let's click our x-ray view hit 3 on a numpad so we can see go over into the cube I'm gonna go up right alongside of that black but online. It's not all the way, but a little close. Right about here looks good. Okay. So now we have that done. We're going to go back to showing the colors. So now you can still see it, which is good. So now what you have to do is you've got to select only the cube. And we're going to do the modifier again. Modifier add modifier and we're gonna do bowling eyedropper tool and it's set for difference so I'm gonna click on the object text for the Y and you see you selected the text so now we gotta do is hit apply and now we can hide the text of the Y and there you have it now it's in there and you can actually see it this time it didn't have to do anything extra extra so the Y is in there, we got the X and the Y, now we just need to do the Z. And we're still in object mode as you can see here. And we can delete the text now because we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to right click on the highlighted um, text button, a box, and then we're going to go down to delete here. And now it's gone. All we got is our cube and I don't have the X anymore because I already deleted that and we're gonna go down I'm gonna delete this um, information about the cube 
So I'm going to close that out, close that, close that, close that. Good. No more uh, information for the numbers because we don't need it. All right. Now that we're done with the X and the Y, now let's do the Z. So we're going to hit Shift A on a keyboard. Do text again because we're still in object mode. I'll bring it up. And then zoom in. Move over. Zoom in. Now we're going to do edit again because we got to change the text from text to Z. So we're going to take that out, hitting the backspace button on the keyboard, shift Z. And then we're going to go to edit on um, the A. And then we got to click font again. Font. And then we're going to go down to size and bring it up to four. Remember like how I told you before, go up to four. Four. All right. So now we have our text set for four. And now we're going to do is go back into edit mode. Oh no, we're going to go into object mode. I mean, I'm sorry. Object mode. We're going to right click on the, t on the Z and then we're going to convert to mesh one more time. This is going to be the last time that you have to do that. So now it is an object. So now we're going to go into edit mode. And we're going to select all the faces. So we're going to hit B to box select. And we're going to just grab all the, ver all the faces on the Z. And we're going to do three on a numpad so we can see. Go over so we can see. And then we're going to hit E to extrude. And then we're going to hit Z for the, the Z axis to go up. I'm not sure how well that look. Oh, okay, it looks okay for the most part. Okay, I gotta make sure that we're doing everything correctly here. So now I'm going to select the edge. So I'm gonna hit A twice, one, two, or wait, one, two, there we go. And just select this edge so we can see, oh wait, no, this edge so that we can see how tall it is now or how high. So segment, go down. I'm going to change that to red now that we deleted all the other ones we don't need. Um, so then bring up the font size. So we got two millimeters already. So now I want to go to three on my keyboard so we can see. And then I'm going to do x-ray view. And then we're going to hit A twice. One, two. Wait, one, two. And then we're going to do the vertices, individual vertices. Hit B again. Box select just these top vertices. And then we're going to go down. Because we want it to be one millimeter. Just like all the other ones we're trying to do. Two, one, oh, eight, oh, five. Yeah, it could be a little tricky to get it exactly, but sometimes it uh, sometimes you can get it exact like how you want it. But sometimes I'll be having issues, so I don't know. <laughs> but uh, there it goes one one millimeter. So now we're done with that. So now all we gotta do is go. Oh wait, no, this has to be five. That's right, because we're going to be scaling it out to make it big enough. So we're at three, four. And five. Okay. So now we're done with this. Hit tab on the keyboard. And then we're in object mode one more time. So let's do seven on our keyboard. So we can see the top view. And let's select our colors so we can see. And let's hide the five. And then we're going to go three on our numpad. And then since we still have this selected, we're going to right click on it. 
and we're going to do set origin to mass center of mass surface volume again. Now we're going to bring it over to the Z line, the blue line. So now that we have that selected and positioned right, we're going to hit R on our keyboard and then hit 90, 90 to do to rotate it 90 degrees. Hit enter. I'm going to do one on the keyboard. Well, on the numpad anyway. Now that we have that, you will be able to, you can bring this down. And remember, we need to do x-ray view so we can see our y and our z, our x and the z. So let's get it over to the center as best as we can. About right here I would say would do pretty good now we're gonna scale it out we still have Z selected so I hit scale now we can drag it out to make it bigger remember we want to try to have the X Y and Z all the same same size so right about there looks okay I'm gonna go up a little bit right about here that looks pretty good matter of fact I like that it looks really pronounced and as accurate as all the other ones anyway now that we're done with this one uh, let's get to finishing up our Z so I'm gonna go back to showing the colors now let's go three on a keyboard and now we're gonna do R90 again because we still have the Z selected hit enter then we're gonna go up on our keyboard on, on our mouse I mean on the Z and then we're going to move it over to I want to say right about here let's go click on the Z so we can see exactly where we're at and I'm gonna look at the calibration cube right quick just to see how it looks when you're looking at it on the XY so the Z is showing the edge of the Z is looking all the way on the right so we're gonna have to rotate this so we're gonna rotate 90 degrees I'm gonna rotate again 90 degrees uh, still not completely accurate let's rotate 180 degrees Enter, I'm going to rotate one more time. R, 190. Enter. I'm looking at the Z on the calibration cube just to make sure it's looking right. And it still doesn't look completely accurate. So let me just rotate 10 degrees. Oh no, let me undo that. Control Z. Control Z. Come on. There. Alright, um. So let's rotate 90 degrees. Still not completely accurate. I don't know if they designed it in a way that is opposite basically like the opposite direction <laughs> it's strange because this should be accurate but it's not looking completely right here but um I'll just rotate one more time rotate 90 Now we're going to do three on a numpad so we can see. And then we're going to do the wireframe x-ray view. And then we're going to do right about here. That should be <clears throat> accurate enough. Matter of fact, it could just be that the Z is upside down. So let me just hit R90 while we're in this view. R90 
and then we're gonna go back to our colors and then we're gonna go seven on a numpad so we can see seven okay okay now it looks right all right good so that's what the problem was <laughs> But I got it now, so that's good. So now let's go back to our three. So we can see on the right side view. And then I'm going to do x-ray view again. This will be the last time that we should have to do this, hopefully. So I'm going to go down. Uh, bring this down just a little bit. Because remember, we can always extrude or move the vertices face around so that we can make sure it's looking exactly the same length as all the other ones so right about there I'm gonna go up just a tad right here should be good okay so now we're going to do our colors and now we just gotta click on our box or our cube and then we're going to go to modifier. So click on the wrench again, add modifier, and go back to Boolean. This should be the last time that we have to do any of this. Now we're going to click on the eyedropper tool onto the text or the Z. Hit, and you see it says text there. Drop down, and then go down to apply, applied. So now we're going to hide the Z or the text. So now we're going to go up, and now you can see that it's actually there. Just like it did for the Y. So now we have X, Y, and Z. And that actually looks accurate. I'm looking at the calibration cube. So X is right here. I don't know how well you guys can see that in the camera, but X, the Y is in the back, and the Z is at the top. So X in the front right here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. X right here. And then the Y is on the back. And the Z is at the top. So now we have all that done. Let's just double check. I'm going to click on the cube. Then we're going to go back into it. Uh, edit mode. So tab on my keyboard. We're going to hit A twice. One, two. To deselect everything. And now we want to see how deep this is. So I'm going to click on this vertice, shift, and then click again for the bottom vertice, segment, so we can see the height. And then we're going to change that color. I like red. That's my favorite color. That's why I keep using it. And then we're going to bring it up from 14 to be bigger, and it's 120, 129.29. So that is okay, but we want it to do one. So we're gonna have to change this. So now let's go to front view. Front view. Now we're gonna do the x-ray view. I'm sorry, I know I said the last time that I was gonna be the last time, but we have to do it again for this. So now I'm gonna hide the numbers. So we're gonna hit B on our keyboard and grab all these top Z vertices and then we're going to show again the number so we can go down just a tad here okay let me just control Z undo that so I don't think I got the all the all of them so I'm going to do the colors again, go back to the top. Let's just select the faces. Oh, no. We got... Oh, that's why I didn't get all the vertices. So let me just hit A twice to deselect everything. And now we're going to just select each individual vertice that's at the top here for the Z. So shift, click, click 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 just keep on holding down the shift and that's selecting all those vertices so now we should have all the vertices for the Z selected for the top so now we're gonna go back to front view so one on numpad x-ray view one last time hopefully 
and then we're gonna go down so there we go so now we're going down from that 20 something I believe it was but we're gonna go down to one at least try to there we go one perfect so now that is finished so now we have one millimeter high or thick for the Z so now we're gonna go into object mode so I'm gonna hit tab on my keyboard and we're gonna select the colors so we can see and I'm gonna um, click my middle mouse button so we can see I'm gonna hide the number and you can see the Z looks really well and the X looks really well and the Y looks well as well <laughs> so we got X, Y, and Z calibration cube made so now the last part that you're gonna want to do is let me just move this over a little bit here I'm gonna go to we have it selected and let's make sure we delete any other object so the text right click hit delete the light right click delete the camera right click delete make sure the only thing we have left is the cube or the caliber on um, ca um, collections it doesn't matter because this is just a cube right now so we have the cube so now what we have to do is go to file and then we're going to do export and we're going to move over to STL click on that and then you can set your location I'm going to put 3D prints or 3D designs okay and then we're going to change it to XYZ cube so I'm going to name it capital X Y Z and then we're gonna hit export because it's going into my 3d designs folder export so there you have it so that should do it that should be it so I'm gonna close um, bring this down and then I'm gonna go over here so that way you guys can see we're gonna do capital X Y and Z file so you can see it right there and you can see that Cura the Ultimaker Cura is already selected so I'm going to right click open the file con the containing file you can see right here it's showing just fine so now I'm going to go over and then we're going to type in C for oh C U R A for Cura so this is the version of Kira that I'm using, the 4.5. I know it has a new version of it, but I don't care for downloading it because I don't want to, really want to have to figure out how to use that version of Kira. So we're going to open it up, click on it, and it's going to take a second for it to load up. So now it's loading, 4.5.0 loading loading it's gonna tell you to if you want if you need to update it's gonna ask you if you want to update the firm the file or not the file but the program to the newest version of it anyway see so it's loading UI um, there it goes now we'll be able to see everything and you see it's already still set for my Ender 3. So that's the Ender 3. And you see right here, I was telling you, so you have Cura 5.3 now, but I don't need that. So I'm not going to download that or try to install it yet. Um, but right now I'm going to go to the um, file box here, click on it. And then we're going to go down to 3D Designs here. And I'm going to highlight this, right click, copy bring this back down and then I'm going to open it up over here I'm going to paste it enter and now we have all the information from when I was designing or downloading um, STL files and stuff so now we just need to scroll down to XYZ so it should be close to the bottom I believe come on where are you Yeah, I have a lot of 3D design and 
STL files. Oh, there it goes. X, Y, and Z. I hit open. And there you have it. And there goes our 20 millimeter calibration cube we just created in Blender. And if you want it to, you can always um, slice the program. But first, we're going to double check. I'm going to make sure that it's set for the right temperature and things of that nature because we're still in prepare. So if I click on this, oh, let me click on that, and then we're going to click on this. Uh, now it's giving, oh, there it goes. Okay. So custom, there we go. Now if I go down, let me just make sure you guys can see me. Um, if we go down, you can see that I have it set for um, 4 millimeter, uh, 4M, uh, 4 millimeters thick. And if I just keep on scrolling down a little bit here, uh, you'll be able to see the temperature and things of that nature in here. Top layer is one, blah, blah, blah. But I need to show the temperature. Okay, speed. I'm not seeing the temperature yet. Quality. Material. Speed. Recommended. Oh, here it goes. Temperature. Let me just bring this down. Infill density. Oh. The density, I usually keep my infill at 100%. Just to make sure it's solid. Anyway, um, now that we had the temperature, wherever that just went. Um, speed. Infill. Where is the temperature out again? I clicked it once and now I can't see it. Oh, thickness. Grid. Speed. Cooling. So yeah, we need a cooling fan. We don't need any supports, so that's not necessary. But I'm still looking for that temperature, man. I need the temperature to make sure. Because if you're using... It depends on what kind of filament that you're using. So, I believe that PLA is um, 210 or like a little over 200 um, degrees Celsius. Thickness. A shell. Density, speed, material. Oh, I do lines whenever I'm 3D printing. And, um, infill, speed, support, adhesion, type. Well, I like to do a skirt every time I'm doing my designs. So a skirt that will put out some filament before it actually starts printing. Part cooling, cooling. Enable retraction, so we need to add that. Speed, material, infill. Lines, good. 100% temperature, here we go. So, printing temperature. So, I use, I have PET, so PET filament. So, I need to be at 260 is what I use my 3D printer for. And then for the bed, for the heating of the bill plate that it's printing on, I use 68. So then, that should be it for that. I'm going to close out of this. And then we're going to hit slice. And it's going to give a second to convert everything. So it's going to take an hour and 22 minutes to be able to print it out. So we're going to do preview. 
And now you can see the skirt is right here. That's the line, that's that um, circle, or like circular box here. And then you can see the X is right here, the Z is at the top, and then the Y should be in the back right here that we just made. So now we just go down and you can see when it's gonna print and where it's gonna be printing at when it's printing. So first layer, it's gonna do the box and then it's gonna go up and then it's gonna be finishing off up to the Z. And there you have it. So we just, I just showed you guys how you can design a calibration cube just like the ones you can get off of Thingiverse onto Blender so hopefully you guys are liking this video and if you want to learn how to 3d design things to print out on your 3d printer like how I have the Ender 3 or like a CR10 or whatever 3d printer you have um, definitely comment down below so I could be your tutor because I'm gonna set me up either a Fiverr account or a Udemy account so that way I could train you guys step by step and you'll be able to see my my face like how you can see it right now and we can actually have a conversation talk about where you're at and you can follow along with me so that way I can show you how to do this I hope you guys are liking the video please like share subscribe let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below my name is Legitly and I will see you guys in the next video goodbye